McPherson Estate, Circuit Road, Block 80. There it is. Waiting on porridge from this stall. Always intriguing, the 100% Chinese sign. Uh, couldn't couldn't tell you exactly what that says, you know? And of course, you no notice that it's in traditional characters too. So, right, Singaporeans beware. You, you, you tell me that learning Hong Kong is, is irrelevant, but even in a country where the system is has been brought into simplified, not in the food center, baby. Look at those characters, those are miserable. A beautiful morning with laundry drying outside the HDB here in McPherson Estate and Circuit Road, and I'm with Zayn and Holly. Hello, folks, and so Zayn, what do we have here? So this is uh, from the Madina Nasi Padang stall. This is lontong, it's a traditional Malay dish. So these are like rice cakes, I suppose, and the little uh, gravy slash soup that is bathed in is called like kualima, is what it's called. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you what's in it. Kualama is oh. what it is. Yeah. And lemak is the one meaning coconut or cream. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Right. So it's yeah, so along those lines, it's oh. got these uh, vegetables I've like never heard that. That's long awesome. beans and things like that. Yeah. Oh. And this uh, this thing that's on it is serunding. So serunding is kind of like um, what do you call it? Floss. It's, oh. it's floss of some kind of meat. I, I would think this is beef serunding. I think. Wow. I'm not sure. I've but never heard that the word be either. It. Sorry, this is yeah. There you go. Right and of course you have sambal to make it a little spicy. Sure. Yeah. Just good old sambal. Sarunding. Sarunding, yeah, that's Sarunding. what it is. Yeah, awesome. yeah, yeah. Oh man, well splendid, thanks Ali. <laughs> and, and Holly, what, what are you looking at here? I have fresh fish porridge. Uh, this is all I know about it. Spectacular. This is great. Spectacular. Uh, Titanic. Yeah, <laughs> gorgeous, gorgeous. I, I should, I should yes. say. Uh, this one. Uh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah, okay. So this is epo epo kentang. Uh, epo epo <laughs> sounds like Ewok. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I said I, like a long, I think episode three of this series, uh, you know, viewers at home, I mentioned that my way of remembering how to say this is that Ewoks like epochs. Epoch is not the right way to say it, but it makes for a good mnemonic. Anyways, yeah, but what's, what's in this? So epo epo kentang is basically curry puffs, and uh, inside these ones you have uh, potato. That's why it's called well, epo epo kentang. Yeah, well, kentang means potato. So guys, so, 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 so folks, I'm sorry, Zab, but I'm just so excited to say that kentang, we, we know this word from one of the most one of the most beloved singlish expressions which is jia kentang right which is potato eater right so, so if you're chinese okay so so one of the first one of the first lessons i ever had in singlish is that if you're chinese but you can't really speak chinese you only speak english you're jia kentang because potato eater as opposed to rice eater it's you know it's a little problematic but it's still the expression so okay so epo epo kentang is epo epo with potatoes in it so you also have epo epo sardine which is epo epo with sardine in it obviously and things like that but and, this one's kentang and now and Zai, let me clarify too that the distinction between curry puff and epok epok is is what, or do you consider them the same? Uh, I don't know. So curry puffs are not an accurate word to describe epok epok. Epok epok is just epok epok. Okay. Curry puffs usually apply to like other things, like um, they're usually bigger. They're the usually... triangle shaped one. Uh, the fluffy, like yeah, the, the, the triangle flaky or, one? The, or like the rectangular ones. Yeah, the flaky ones. The, the flaky, flaky ones. Thing. So okay, are, that's curry puff. <laughs> that's curry puff. I think we're finally yeah. getting to the bottom yeah, of this. Yeah, yeah. Where for I, I've I've had I guess. For, for years now, even I remember Xia In Food Center was the first place that I considered the the question of epok epok versus curry puff, right. and, and Zayed has helped us figure out that this is the this, one yeah. that is epok epok. This one epok with firm. this like, semicircular shape, uh, and and you can tell even what kind of epok epok it is. Like what's the filling by how they knead this part. Oh my god! Yeah, really? so, so like whether or not it goes outwards or whether it goes like folded inwards. Yeah, this is that's how wow. you tell what's in the epok epok. Oh jeez, so spectacular! There you go. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, I cut the video before I introduced my porridge, which is the same as Holly's, except it has abalone uh, for only three dollars and fifty cents too. So, you know, abalone can be expensive, but it doesn't have to be. Doing amazing so far. This is one of the best bowls of porridge I've had in the past couple of weeks, and I've had a lot of bowls of porridge, you know. So that's saying something. Um, but just to point out that you will often have with porridge these add-ons: uh, white pepper, and this, which I'm going to go with. Ninety-eight percent is vinegar. I'll just put it in the spoon right now and tell you if it's vinegar. The chances are excellent that it is just vinegar. Um, or a thin, light soy sauce. Let's see. Mm. Not vinegar. Okay, it is a thin, light soy sauce. So scratch that. Um, but the white pepper is consistent and a really good, a really good match for a porridge. So once again, we have a little bit of confusion surrounding the name of a food center. So this they're calling McPherson uh, Block 89 Market and Food Center, whereas the official NEA list only says Circuit Road Block 89. Holly points out this excellent signage, uh, alerting us to where to find all of the things we need. And then we walk in here and find a food center. How about it? And here we are now, still hanging with Holly and Zayed, and we have a prata. 
Good old egg prata. Egg prata, okay. Yep. Now, and how, how do we say egg in Malay again? Telo. Tel, telo, right. Prata right, telo. Right. Prata telo, right. Okay, and if it's plain, we can say kosong, right? Kosong, prata kosong. Yeah, don't tell me onions, I'm going to remember I'm gonna remember how to sure. say this. I know, uh, don't lose it, Austin. <laughs> I, I know... Bawang. There you go. That's the way. Bawang is onions. Okay, good. And then, um, and then here at Dosa. Dosa, not really thought of as a, as a principal Singapore hawker food, but you find it often enough in hawker center, so why not include? And then stuff from the chain, but still nice, deli snack stall, um, two uh, sesame uh, and yellow bean, one sesame peanut, and then these guys are fried bananas known as either goreng pisang or pisang goreng. <laughs> and the truth is either one, either one can. Yeah. Yeah, so we're just having this philosophical discussion, right? And um, pisang goreng grammatically makes more sense. If you think about other foods that have the goreng in them, you know, they're fried something like nasi goreng, or mi goreng, or ayam goreng. Everything is, it is grammatically sound. It's something fried, something fried. That's how it works in Malay. So for some reason, in the case of pisang, in the case of bananas, we have goreng pisang, which just came about and became like a term that people use, even though grammatically doesn't make sense. On the way to Aljunid, if I'm not wrong, block 117. This is the fourth to last Hawker Center, number 105 in the country. And it's starting to get to the point where, as I try to navigate across this ravine, give me one moment. We've come to the point where each bowl of food carries this great weight because I won't, I won't have too many left. So here we go, Aljunid. And after Aljunid, it's Badok Reservoir. And after Badok Reservoir, it's Marine Terrace. And after Marine Terrace, it's Yunos Crescent. And that's it. The bridge over the PIE. Not even eight lanes of traffic can stop us now. Block 117, Aljunid Avenue 2, with veg food and Indonesian food. And Anshuman, with his Powerpuff Girls t-shirt. Anshuman, yeah, yeah, great, great, amazing, amazing. <laughs> Anshuman, what is this? This is Ayam Penyet, which is smashed fried chicken, which interestingly is more of a thing outside of Indonesia than within Indonesia itself. Mm. It's a thing, but it's not as big a phenomenon inside of Indonesia itself. Delicious, of course. Nice. And then vegetarian Chinese food, sometimes called temple food, sometimes called Buddhist food, but there's an entire genre of often noodles like this with cabbage, but then you see this meat roll, that's a vegetarian no hyang. This vegetarian meat roll definitely doesn't taste quite like proper meat roll. It, it, a little bit like this is stuffed with refried beans. I know that's not true. I can't figure out exactly what it is. Um, nice, nice, but it's... Um, just its own beast. Meanwhile, I'm quite a fan of our pinyet here. I mean, nice and salty on the outside, good veggies, and then this sambal, of course, looks like it could blow your face off, but it really doesn't. It's it's hot, but it's more flavorful than hot. You say so? I concur. That's my concurs. In typical fashion, we discover only after the meal that this food center does have a name other than its block number. Uh, NEA, I'm telling you, you gotta include these in the list, right? So Geelong East Food Center is block 117 Aljunied, uh, Avenue 2. Uh, so, believe one of these days, we're gonna get a version of this list that has it all laid out. Mark my words. Walking back across that pedestrian bridge over the PIE here in Geelong East, or Aljunid. You tell me that this isn't picturesque. Tell me that. 